Sometimes Bobby Fischer's storied career off the chessboard overshadows his incredibly brilliant career on the chessboard. Despite how brief it was, he played as many brilliant games as most great players put together in their entire lives. His game today is against René Letelier, the five-time champion of Chile from the 1960 Olympiad. Bobby Fischer demonstrates perfectly and beautifully how to punish a player who tries to grab too much space as white. He catches Letelier's king in the center and with instructive attacking moves and a brilliant finish, closes the game out in under 25 moves. This game begins with Letelier playing white against Fischer who plays his very famous King's Indian defense. An interesting deviation already happens here on move four when instead of playing the slightly more common d6, Fischer chooses to castle. Now, normally castling or playing d6 transpose and basically end up in the same lines, the same positions. But in this case, Letelier decides to take advantage of Fischer's choice not to play d6, and he advances with e5. Now, this is a very aggressive approach, but it's also one that's considered a little bit too aggressive. White is committing a lot of pawns forward in the center, and he's inviting black to kind of counterattack those. This is what basically any black player who plays the King's Indian defense wants to see. And if you play the King's Indian defense, you really should have seen this game as a perfect model of how to punish white if he goes for it with the pawns in the center of the board. The knight now has to retreat and it might look like white is dominating the board, but he spent a lot of tempo on pawn moves and after f4, maybe h4 or bishop e3 are better here. Pawn d6 is already going to um, result in some chipping away of the white center and white is going to end up behind in development and a long way from castling. One thing to note here is that White's last move, f4, is kind of natural once you've already played e5. And I think that when you play pawn moves in the opening, you really push forward and play a lot of pawn moves, you will often find that you then have to play more pawn moves to support the pawns that you've already placed in the center of the board. So having played e5, it's now natural for white to play f4, but this results in just further loss of tempo. You're not getting your knights and bishops out. You're not getting castled. Those should be a priority as we're going to see in this game. So after d6, bishop e3, we do get a developing move and boom, c5. We strike at the center with Fisher's uh, pawn on the c file and we're going to already see the white center crumble. Now, one of the other things I love about this game is Letelier answers all the questions that uh, one might be inclined to ask here. Why don't we capture the pawns in the center of the board? Letelier is mostly going to play the most obvious move. He'll be punished for it, but as students, we can be grateful for uh, to him for playing the obvious move and letting Fisher show us why it doesn't work. So he goes ahead and grabs a pawn here, um, but in doing so, of course, he breaks up his center and now Fisher steps out with knight c6, a developing move, putting a lot of pressure here on e5. Again, Letelier plays the obvious move, grabbing another pawn here on d6, and then we get e takes d6. The knight on e8, when it retreated uh, to its four square on e8, does serve some function because it is helping us support this pawn on d6. Now. At this point, I already like black. <laughs> I think that Bobby Fischer is doing super well in this position, but after a more patient move like knight f3 here, I don't think Letelier is likely to lose a miniature. He's probably gonna get past move 25, and objectively, maybe white's position isn't even so bad, although I would certainly prefer to be developing and castling than playing all the pawn moves that white has played. However, now Letelier again steps forward, moving a piece twice in the opening, which your chess coaches are always going to tell you is a bad idea, and they're going to tell you that for good reason. Bishop f5 develops another piece with tempo hitting the knight, and now Letelier decides that his original idea behind knight e4 was bad. He's not going to take on d6, when after the capture on d6, queen takes d6, black has some good choices. One good choice that Stockfish suggests is queen e8, when the moves pawn f6 and rook d8 are coming and white is in a lot of trouble, I can easily see a sacrifice on e5 giving up a piece to rip open the center being a crushing idea. 
or you can just trade on d6 rather than sliding the queen to e8. And after ed, knight b4, threatening knight c2 check. This is also pretty dangerous. And I actually kind of think this is probably what Bobby Fischer would have played here rather than the queen e8 line, but both are not pleasant. And Letelier decides instead of taking on d6, he's going to step back with knight g3. So the bishop moves back to e6. The loss of tempo by moving the bishop to f5 and then to e6 is offset by the knight running all over the place. Now we get another developing move from white, which is a good idea. And queen c7, preparing to capture on e5 without uh, allowing a trade of queens. Even capturing and allowing the trade of queens is still good, but you're not going to win the miniature that Bobby Fischer is going to win here if you uh, allow the trade of queens. Queen b1 now is a suspicious move, right? We're moving another piece, but we're not really developing it. We're moving our queen along the first rank, but it does have an idea, and I can't really find a good suggestion uh, for Letelier in this position. His idea is that after the capture on e5, his queen supported the move pawn f5, so he's trying to keep the position closed. If he can close it down, he figures maybe he'll have enough time to get castled, and maybe things will be okay, right? A lot of times, if you get castled or if you close the position, then the tempo that you're down might matter a little less than if the position is open. However, Fisher now strikes pawn to e4. So he's going to give up this pawn to make sure things stay open, and he's opening up this bishop, which is really, really nice. Now, Letelier, I think, had to capture on e4 with the queen, and then probably I think we would see bishop takes b2, hitting the rook. After the rook moves, maybe you have bishop c3 check. It's actually not bad to capture on f5. Maybe the best idea is to capture on f5 too. Even though you open up your king a little bit, it's okay because you're castled and white may never get castled. Um, but in this position, white is not lost. It looks rough to be white. I would not want to be white, but white is not lost. And after... The capture on e6 here, white is definitely lost. So we capture the bishop on e6, but then black gets to capture our knight on f3. We can't really tolerate the pawn on f3, so we're going to capture that. And now here I think is a nice move from Fisher that a lot of players wouldn't play. Maybe pause your video, see if you can find what he played. He steps forward with pawn f5. I think a lot of players wouldn't play this because capturing on e6 is a good idea. And you might not want to leave the pawn alive on e6. But this pawn on e6 is basically dead. And uh, it's very strong here to push forward and to threaten f4. Um, at this point, also by the way, the rook is kind of getting in the game. White needs to play f4 to stop black from playing f4. So he does that. The knight now develops to f6. And we're going to continually see Fisher include his pieces that are not yet participating in the attack from here on out. So knight gets off of e8 and comes out to f6. Pay attention to that. I have so many students who, when attacking, only play with the pieces that are already developed. And instead, Fisher in this position, I think very rightly, focuses on the pieces that are not developed and rapidly brings them into the attack and finishes white off. Okay, bishop e2, another developing move. Rook e8, we're just going to pick up e6, and we're just going to be breathing fire down the e-file. King steps over to f2, we just grabbed that. The rook gets to e1, and it feels like Letelier might be getting in bishop f3 soon, and might have a tenable position, although I really think moves like bishop h6, um, and lots of other things will crush white anyway, but we have pretty much a tactical finish here. We bring the other rook, now every black piece is participating in the attack, and after bishop f3, for advanced players, you can try to find the finish that Bobby Fischer played here right now. Pause your video. See if you can find his next three moves that forced Letelier to resign. The winning move here is rook takes e3. And then after rook takes e3, rook takes e3, king takes e3, we need another follow-up. So if you saw rook takes e3, good job but you also need this next move to justify rook takes e3. Otherwise, the game wouldn't be quite over. Pause your videos and definitely take a moment to figure out what Fisher played here that forced Letelier to immediately resign. Boom, queen takes f4, and on move 23, Letelier gave up the game. The key point is that after king takes f4, 
Bishop h6 is a beautiful checkmate. I love this checkmate so much. Basically, all of black's pieces are participating in this checkmate, and I love how the knight on c6 is covering the e5 square. It's rare that you get to sacrifice the queen to meet the king in the middle of the board with only your minor pieces. Absolutely spectacular and wonderful checkmate demonstrating a brilliant coordination. You also have the option as white to step back and not take the queen. You should move your king back if you're going to play on to defend the bishop on f3. And you should pick this square because if you had gone to e2, knight d4 would already win on the spot. But this is totally winning for uh, for black and Letelier didn't need to see the finish. Knight g4 check is now uh, the strongest move. And after king g2, uh, knight e3 check, king over. I really like knight e5. There are many ways to win this position. But here we just pile up on the bishop on f3. You don't have d1 anymore because we hopped our knight into e3. So if you want to try on, uh, and play on and defend the bishop, you can only go queen h1. But now, like, everything wins. For example, uh, you can check here, and then you can use some checks to pick off the bishop. I also think it looks good to check here, and you can start a king hunt. Um, there's basically no wrong way to play this. You could also set up queen d4, or earlier you could have set up bishop d4 with discoveries. It's just a crushing, crushing attack. In any case, again, Letelier resigned here after queen takes f4, concluding one of Bobby Fischer's most brilliant and beautiful games. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, please do like and subscribe, leave a comment, and also check out our playlist of other brilliant miniatures.